Hello, I'm Jake Tapper in Washington, where the State of Our Union is still searching for answers. This morning, new information about a handwritten note left behind in the Las Vegas shooter's hotel room. A law enforcement source telling CNN that the note contained calculations related to the distance and trajectory from the shooter's 32nd floor window down to the innocent crowd he targeted for slaughter below. One week after the massacre, authorities are still combing through evidence and leads for any indication of what might have led the shooter to commit such a horrific act. As investigators search for answers, lawmakers in Washington are now broaching the debate over gun control, this time with some small signs of agreement. Republicans have expressed openness to a measure that would ban or restrict ownership of bump stocks. Those are the mechanisms used by the Las Vegas shooter to turn his semi-automatic rifles into something more closely resembling an even more rapid-fire automatic weapon. Even the NRA this week endorsed tighter restrictions on the device, though the gun group wants to avoid doing this through any new legislation. One senator at the center of this debate is Democrat Chris Murphy of Connecticut. He represented Newtown in Congress at the time of the Sandy Hook shooting in 2012. And he is now calling on Congress to, quote, get off its ass and do something about gun violence in America. Senator Murphy is joining us now live from Connecticut. Senator, thanks for joining us. A growing number of Republican lawmakers say that they're open to regulating or banning bump stocks, the kind of device used by the Las Vegas killer that, as you know, allows a legal semi-automatic rifle to mimic the rapid discharge of a fully automatic weapon. Are you willing to advance a clean bump stocks bill or will you insist on a broader gun control package? I am willing to move forward with the Republicans on banning these bump stocks that, as you mentioned, uh, subverts legislation that's been long on the books, banning automatic weapons. Um, I think you have to walk before you run, and I do think this is an important moment. The NRA, at least in the time that I've been in Congress, has never been willing to change U.S. gun laws. I think they see that they were likely going to lose this fight uh, in Congress, and so now they're trying to get it done through administrative action. But this is is the first time that the gun lobby has shown willingness to come to the table. And I think that's in part because Americans just simply do not accept mass shooting after mass shooting happening and Congress doing absolutely nothing. But this is uh, a fairly small change. And if we really want to have a downward trajectory on the number of mass shootings or the number of gun deaths every single day, um, you've got to go far beyond just uh, clarifying that people shouldn't have automatic weapons in this country. The ATF, uh, it's been reported, uh, approved the bump stock during the Obama administration. Uh, was that a mistake? Well, the, the underlying language is ambiguous, and that's what the ATF's conclusion was in 2010. Now, I wish the ATF had banned this technology then, but their point is that with a statute that is unclear, it's up to Congress to change it. Uh, so uh, ultimately, I think that we have to have a bill before the House and the Senate that makes it completely clear that if you own an automatic weapon, if you've converted a semi-automatic weapon to an automatic weapon, then that is is illegal and ultimately I think it's best done by Congress rather than through administrative action. More broadly, um, there was a Pew survey uh, that recently found that there's been a sharp drop since the year 2000 in overall support for gun control, the, the philosophical debate about uh, gun control versus gun rights. Back in 2000, 66 percent of Americans thought that gun control was more important than the rights of gun owners. Today, only 51 percent of Americans come down on the gun control side, 47 percent on the gun rights side. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think your, your side is losing the larger philosophical debate on this issue? Well, I mean, this is one of those questions that comes out differently depending on how you ask it. Um, there actually is no choice to be made between gun control and gun rights. So that question is flawed from the outset. I am a Second Amendment supporter. I do not want to take away any gun rights um, that are held through constitutional protections for gun owners in my state. Um, but polls also consistently show that 90 percent of Americans support universal background checks, including gun owners, including NRA members. So people can a, support gun rights, and B, support common sense restrictions to make sure that dangerous people don't get guns and that people don't get dangerous weapons. Uh, there is no inconsistency between the two. And this is really, you know, one of the, the most unique issues in American politics where you do have broad agreement on some of these measures, like universal background checks, and you can't get them passed through Congress. I ultimately don't think democracy allows for that uh, for very long. You, um, you said earlier that you would be willing 
uh, to allow a clean bill in Congress uh, that bans uh, or regulates uh, bump stocks uh, without uh, having a, a further, I'm sorry, pump stocks, without allow, uh, uh, requiring more broader gun control to be attached to the bill. Um, is universal background checks the next step, though? You said, you said you'd be willing to separate it. Is universal background checks clo closing the so-called gun show loophole, uh, requiring um, background checks for private sales, is that the next step for people uh, in your philosophical camp in Senate? It should be the next step, in large part because it is the most popularly uh, accepted change. Uh, and it has the biggest effect. What we know is that uh, in states that have universal background checks, gun crimes are reduced by as much as 40 percent. And, you know, there's this fiction that the gun lobby tries to perpetuate, that there are no laws that could stop evildoers from perpetuating the kinds of crimes that we saw in Las Vegas and that we see in Chicago. And that's simply not true. What we know is that states that have tougher gun laws, that keep criminals from getting guns, that keep those dangerous weapons like AR-15s out of the hands of civilians, have dramatically lower rates of gun violence. And so we have plenty of data to tell us that, in fact, if you have tougher gun laws, you will have less gun crime. And what we know is that the most important intervention is background checks. It's the intervention supported by the largest number of Americans. And so, yes, that would be the clear next step. That should be our North Star as we try to figure out how to proceed. But with all due respect, Senator, uh, this horrific uh, shooting in Las Vegas, uh, the gentleman passed his background checks. There didn't seem to be any reason to prevent him from purchasing uh, firearms. Uh, there were no uh, mental health issues that we've been told about, at least so far, that would have uh, allowed anybody to block him from buying a gun. I understand uh, the regulation that you're talking about in terms of, uh, of pump stocks, but, but what about uh, the fact that, like, None of the laws you seem to be talking about would have necessarily prevented this shooter from shooting. It's just that it might have prevented him from shooting as, as rapid fire as he did. Well, I think one of the traps that the gun lobby wants you to get into is being able to only talk about a legislative intervention that would have addressed the last mass shooting. On that day that that shooter turned those guns on civilians in Las Vegas, 80 people died in other parts of the country. Many of those deaths could have been prevented by background checks. And so we need to recognize that though these mass shootings are the ones that get all of the attention, there is no other country in the world that has the level of daily mass gun violence that we do, and we have a responsibility to address all of that as well. Now, laws, I think, potentially would have uh, dramatically changed what happened in Las Vegas. In Newtown, as you know, we uh, constantly ask ourselves whether Adam Lanza would have walked into that school at all had he not had a tactical weapon that gave him some kind of bizarre, perverted confidence that he could pull off a crime of that magnitude. Uh, and I think you have to ask the same thing about this guy as well. So, yes, maybe getting assault weapons off the street would have simply lowered the number of people who died, but that would have been consolation. That would be consolation to many of the family's victims who would have their loved ones still alive, but maybe he would have never walked into that hotel if he only had a pistol, if he didn't have all of these complicated tactical semi-automatic and automatic weapons. All right, Senator, stand by. We have a lot more to talk about uh, this morning, including explosive news, sexual assault allegations against uh, big-time Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. President Trump says he's, quote, not at all surprised. What should Democrats do with all the hundreds of thousands of dollars Weinstein donated to the Democratic Party. That's next. Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Jake Tapper. Here with us is Democratic Senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy. He's also a member of the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate. Uh, Senator, President Trump is expected to announce that next week that he's going to, or this week rather, that he's going to decertify the international nuclear deal with Iran. Uh, the president offered a preview of his thinking earlier last week. Take a listen. The Iranian regime supports terrorism and exports violence, bloodshed, and chaos across the Middle East. That is why we must put an end to Iran's continued aggression and nuclear ambitions. They have not lived up to the spirit of their agreement. On the issues President Trump raised, he's right. Iran does support exporting terrorism. It does export violence across the Middle East. Was it a mistake on the part of the Obama administration to not require that Iran stop its support for terrorist groups as, as part of this deal? Absolutely not. He, the president is right. 
that there are all sorts of other misbehaviors of Iran in the region. But what we came to the conclusion, uh, we came to the conclusion that those behaviors would be much more dangerous if Iran was a nuclear weapons country. Uh, and so we made a decision uh, to take away from Iran a path to a nuclear weapon. And the reality is the president is about to impose on himself and this country a dramatic self-inflicted wound because by pulling out of this agreement, Iran will go back onto a path to develop a nuclear weapon. The other partners that were with us on sanctions uh, over the last decade will not reimpose them. And Iran will look like the victim in this situation. They will get everything they want. They will be able to restart their nuclear program. They will continue to get sanctions relief and they will look like the aggrieved party. And it is just absolute fantasy to think that this president is going to be able to get them back to the negotiating table when they ultimately will get everything that they want uh, if we were going to, if we ended up violating this agreement. Let's turn to Harvey Weinstein. He's the Oscar winning producer and major Democratic donor who took a leave of absence uh, from the Weinstein Company this week after it was revealed in the New York Times uh, that he has quietly settled at least eight sexual harassment complaints over three decades. A variety of Democratic senators are returning contributions from him. You have not gotten any contributions from him, I should note. Um, but a variety of Democrats are returning them or giving them to charity. But the Democratic National Committee, the DSCC, the Senate arm, and the DCCC, the Congressional arm, the House arm, are not giving all the Weinstein money back. Do you think that all that Weinstein money, we're talking here about more than $400,000, needs to be returned or donated to charity by all the arms of the Democratic Party? Yeah, I think that probably makes sense. I mean, this is a pretty bad guy uh, who did some really awful things. And, you know, if people need for that money to be returned in order to make it clear that the, that the entities that receive them want nothing to do with him and his behavior, then, you know, that's probably a smart move. But, you know, let, let's be honest, you know, we take tens of thousands of contributions. Uh, I don't require a background check for, to contribute to my campaign. And so uh, there are probably lots of people uh, with unsavory backgrounds and pasts who have given to both Democrats and Republicans. But this was uh, a high profile individual who did some truly awful things and people that took money from him should probably give it back. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is on thin ice uh, this week, according to sources in the administration. Uh, after we all learned that he referred to President Trump in a private meeting, uh, as a moron, uh, by all accounts, Tillerson is pushing for President Trump uh, to stay in the Paris Climate Agreement. He's been trying to de-escalate tensions with North Korea. Uh, he is seen by many um, in the foreign policy community as a moderating force. If Tillerson were to step down, are you worried about who might come next as Secretary of State? I am worried, and I think whoever would replace Secretary Tillerson would be in a no-win situation. The fact of the matter is we have two different foreign policies in this country right now, which is catastrophic for us. We have one foreign policy that comes from the State Department and the Department of Defense, and then we have another foreign policy that comes from the president's Twitter feed. The president was undermining Secretary of State Tillerson at the exact moment that he was in China trying to negotiate with the Chinese to get tougher on the North Koreans and their nuclear weapons program. Um, and so there is no way that you are going to unwind these big foreign policy crises if nobody knows whether the Secretary of State speaks for the president. And I have a feeling that whoever replaces Tillerson uh, would suffer the same problem, that President Trump would never give them uh, the authority to ultimately try to speak on their own. Yes, if you've been accused of calling the president a moron, you should probably clarify that you didn't do it. But at the same time, this problem is not going away so long as the president um, has you know, his, his, his own uh, foreign policy through social media. Do you think Tillerson should resign? Again, I don't think that that solves the problem. I think the president should stop undermining the people in his administration. I think he should stop doing hurtful things to the country's national security, like telling the North Koreans that there is no diplomatic path for them to give up nuclear weapons. Uh, you know, I have big disagreements with Secretary Tillerson. I don't think he's been a good Secretary of State, but I'm not sure that there's anyone that can succeed in that position, given the just absolutely catastrophic dysfunction of this White House. All right, Senator Chris Murphy, Democrat of Connecticut, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Jake. President Trump issuing a cryptic warning about the calm before the storm. What could the ominous comments mean?